Hello everybody, so welcome to a painting guide. Today, Icon74 is gonna tell us how he's painting his solar auxilia. So, this is a Dracosan, isn't it? It is. So how did you do it? Right, I started with a black base coat, um, and then I used um, three colors with a xenophore highlight. So I used a Vallejo PRU faded blue, mm -hmm. as you can see, like a dark blue. Mm -hmm. uh, then I used a Russian um, AF light blue, as a xenophore over that, obviously between the coats, you leave it to dry. Um, and then a final highlight of um, Russian, I believe it's A18F light blue. <laughs> Fileo have got wonderful names for all their colors. They have got way too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it all with airbrushing as well? Yeah, so all the base coats are done by, by airbrushing. And as you can see, it goes on really nicely when you get to the lighter, lighter colors. It really picks up all the top details. Yeah, it definitely does. So that is this the same uh, scheme as you use for your Legion's Imperialis? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, because I found that the, the sort of the, the the blue, the light blue with a slight green hint was quite effective. Mm, it was. It looked quite nice. So obviously, you went from black as the base coat, and I'm guessing you laid it all up with zenithal techniques. Yes. So at a slight. It was like a 45 degree angle from, from the top down. It's about eight inches away from it on 20 PSI. Mm. Um, yeah, the, these Faleo paints are fantastic as well because you don't really need to thin them down because they're air paints, so they're, you can use them straight out of the bottle, which is fantastic. Mm. Um, yeah, so I just went all the way around. Um, as you can see, it gets getting lighter and lighter. Oh, it is, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really effective. I really like the airbrushing stage because you can really see all the details popping up. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and as I'm doing that, I can already see like, oh, hang on that bit, I'm gonna probably paint that in this color or this color. Or... Mm. I love that little spinny wheel you've got there as well. Yes, Which it's just a little from? Lazy Susan. It's it's really handy, just a spinny round tool. Is that like for cakes then? Well, What's it for? No, I, I think this is specifically for oh, airbrushing. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, I do paint the bottom of my thing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found that's a good way to test if your airbrush paint is, is correctly mixed as well. Yeah. Spray the bottom because you won't really see that afterwards. So it's yeah, it's really handy. Yeah, so thing. after the Dracos M, um, obviously did the Lehman Russ in the same way because they all come in the same box, mm -hmm. um, as well as the the Sentinel, which is footage of here as well. Mm. So what what airbrush are you actually using as well? Um, I've got a very simple Batcher One R Five. Okay. A really basic sort of tool. It's a fantastic little workhorse. It's I've, I've never had it clogged. Mm. <laughs> it's, oh, that's good. <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those you can you can leave paint in it overnight, and the next day it will still function fine. You're kidding it's, me? Feels like yeah. every single one of mine. I, cause I always buy the cheap ones. Unfortunately, yeah. I, I have had two Infinities, and both clogged up to a point where I just could not use them. Um, what are you using here now? So that's the that's the A of light blue. Ah. So I'm going through the different colors, the, the, the three colors that I've used on these on the vehicles. Ah, okay. Yeah, so here we're on the, the AF, so you can see from the side how light it is. That's the, the final AF18F Russian light blue. <laughs> it's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, that's sort of the, the really light sort of blue color with a very slight hint of green in it. Very really nice. Yeah. And then that's the Dracosan again, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Did so you manage I... to magnetize all the weapons for that? Yes, I have. Oh, brilliant. I have. The show's yeah, where that, you was, that was quite fiddly, but yeah, it, it needed to be done. Mm. Um, good, good thing on, on the Sentinel, I didn't have to magnetize any of their weapons because they just slot on. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> really, really good. Do they actually have been built like magnet slots as well or not? Um, on the Sentinel, yes. On the Dracosan, no. But I just drilled with a three mil, drilled through it, and just put the magnets in that way. Right. So for the turret of the Lehman Russ, is it easy enough to swap the, mag the guns out with magnets as well? Or that is was it... that was a bit more tricky. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's, you, it's, you it's, not, it's not impossible. It. You just have to build the magnets in while you're building the tank. Ah, okay. So it takes a little bit of planning in advance, but it's yeah, it's very doable. Did you have to use a drill or? No. No? Okay. No. Well, that's good then. Yeah. All right, so we'll switch off the Sentinel. I use the exact same process as with the with the tanks. Uh, so again, the same black base coat, then Xenophil, the PRU faded blue, 
and the Russian AF light blue and then the AF 18 <laughs> Russian light blue and again it, it's all from a 45 degree angle so mm. you keep all your shades exactly where they're supposed to be um, it, it, it's really handy with airbrushing it is it, it doesn't really go into any of the details uh, so do you do much edge highlighting as well or do you try to skip that a bit I'm, I'm lazy yeah me so too. I, I, I tend to use washes to sort of give me the, the, all, the, all the, the, the raised details and mm. sort of make the natural highlights <laughs> yeah. I feel like this I, I think it's one of the best things about the Horus Heresy like product range when it came out people suddenly realized they didn't have to edge highlight everything they could just chip things on the edges yeah and uh, yeah. it was just game-changing right so I've started doing some pre-weathering as well mm. so normally on on when you see tanks especially in well in, in the 40k universe or the heresy universe um, tanks are always dirty and grubby and I like my tanks dirty and grubby I want mm. to make them look like they're actually driven through a battlefield yep and I've got mud splatters all over them so I, I thought on this first stage I'm actually gonna spray some some brown color so quite a dark brown color over the, the skirting of the tanks okay and the tank guards and that already gives with an airbrush it gives a really nice fade it does yeah uh, so I know I'm, I'm about to start airbrushing on my titan feet with mm. um, a, a nice little drabby brown uh, yeah just to give a little misty of like dust and I think that's it, it is really effective when you can add yeah. that sort of base weathering to it so do you do this is this one of the first things? You, would you do it again after? Because it's pretty much almost like the equivalent of putting powders on, isn't it? It, it is. It is, and I, I might still put some powders on afterwards. Hmm. Um, but for for now, the well, with th this stage is just a pre-weathering, yeah. so the, the wash will then accentuate all the details on on there as well, and then I can add some more chipping. And hmm. so, do you know what colours you use for the track? Yeah, so I've mixed some uh, dried bark, the contrast paint, uh, with some of the, the lightest of the light blue that I used on the top of the tank, because um, I still wanted to have some of the, the base color in with the, the dirt, um, so it would sort of naturally blend in mm. with, with the colors. Um, I, I didn't mix too much of the gray into it. It's, it's mostly dried bark, yeah. which is quite a dominating color, to be fair. Mm. And yeah, then I just go over the, the, the skirts of the tank. They will end the bottom. Hey, it's... good. <laughs> it is one of my favorite colors, actually, dry bark. Mm. I think it's my favorite go-to brown because I like I like starting at dry bark and then dark shading. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's very, very versatile. It gives you a very nice base mm. color you can really work with. Yeah. Plus, the contrast paints are just fantastic. Mm. They really, really work for anything. Yeah. Uh, yes, we're going to apologise for the video quality here. Um, it's actually a really good lamp. Yeah, which... it's, it's one of the more expensive painting lamps, but for some bizarre reason, the frequency of it really interferes with the filming. Mm. Um, but yes, so after the um, airbrushing, um, I applied a, a thin down wash of Corellia Green Shade with Lamia Medium, and I just let that dry over all the tanks. Um, and then I took the Russian AF Light Blue again, the lightest blue, and used a big, a big brush for airbrushing, or not airbrushing, for dry brushing, and I'd dry brush it all over. Yeah, recently I've just started taking to using um, makeup brushes for dry brushing. I always mm -hmm. think they've been really quite effective. Yes. And they're really cheap as well. Yeah, that's because they're really soft. Mm. So the softer the brush, the, the smoother the, the dry brushing becomes. Um, I've got these Artist Opus brushes, so I'm brushing all my, my hand as well. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't just see it on the pores of your hand, then you know that you've taken enough paint off. Yeah. Um, with dry brushing, it's also a good idea to keep the, the little tissue that you wipe your paint off on, to keep that a little bit damp. Oh, really? So you don't really want to be dry dry brushing, because that gives a really sort of grainy effect on the model. If you keep it slightly damp, you get really smooth finishes on your dry brushing. Oh, all right. I've never... I haven't even thought about that. And the, the artist opus brushes there, well, I'm not using one here because I've packed them away because I'm moving house. Yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they really, they, they've got some good videos online as well to show you how to how to do it. Oh, great. But yeah, if, if, if you can sort of do dry brushing, then yeah, you're almost onto a winner. Mm. Because after a wash, it really cleans up 
any sort of splashes that you've left behind mm. and it gives a really smooth finish that's the good thing about this tank as well and it, but these this tank and uh, all the solar auxiliary tanks is they've actually got quite a lot of rivets and uh, like little beams here and there they are they're fantastic for all the race details mm. so dry brushing really really works with it yes and it also helps you to, to sort of highlight the bits that you want to paint afterwards so you can pick out all the details and say oh and you, you find hidden details as well uh, Oh look, there's a little pipe over there. There's a little something. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're crammed full of details. The tank, absolutely yeah. amazing. So what's next? Um, next, I decided to do a little bit of chipping on the tanks because I thought if it drives through the mud, it may as well be chipped and <laughs> shot and just have chunks falling off. It. Well, not chunks falling off of it, but <laughs> I just wanted to do some very simple chipping. So mm. I've just used a little sponge and just a little. I've got a bit of a yellow sponge. It doesn't really matter what sponge you use. Is it kitchen sponge? Yeah. That's well, what I use. That, that one is, yeah. Oh, wow. So it's just tear a little bit off, and then I use some um, just little pincers to hold it in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you use a little bit of Rhinox height, just dab most of it off on some, some kitchen paper, a kitchen roll, and then just go around the whole tank in certain areas. Mm. Particularly the areas where you will feel that it was would be chipping yeah so, <laughs> although it would take damage all over um but eventually around the tracks it will take quite a bit of a beating yeah um, on the door where the door comes down um, especially the bits that the front of the door that yeah. ramps into the ground that will be heavily chipped I always do it around the mechanism as well you know the hinges yeah yeah around hinges doors uh yeah, but you can go as crazy as you want with this. But I would always advise just to, to start with a little bit because sometimes little is little less is more. I agree. Uh, you can always add more afterwards, but you can't take it away easily. No. But, uh, so yeah, just be careful when you go around, and if it looks good, just keep it as is. If you think well, we could do with a little bit more, just add a bit more. Mm. Yeah, it's, just take your time with it. Um, I, I don't really think too much about it because I'm quite chaotic when I'm doing my <laughs> painting, so I'm sort of going all over. Uh, so I can see at this stage you've got most of the detail painted. Yes. So now I'm actually doing the, the varnishing bit before the oil wash, and for that I use floor polish. Hmm. Um, of, of, it's, it's a fantastic, it's, it's cheap as well, and yeah. a bottle lasts you absolutely ages. Mm -hmm. uh, I just Blast that through the airbrush, at least two coats of it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and just leave it to cure for a couple of hours in between the coats. Mm -hmm. So, how did you paint the gold then? Uh, the gold was done with Citadel Balthasar gold. Yeah. Um, and then just aqua earth shade over that. And then I used some shining burnished gold to highlight it. Mm. Nice, nice and simple. Just keep it really simple because the oil wash will really pick out all oh, the details of everything else. Definitely. Uh, that oil washes are just brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I can't get enough of them. Yeah, but yeah, as you can see, the, the floor polish goes on really easy, really smooth. Mm. Uh, just just go all the way around. Make sure it doesn't pull though, because if it pulls, it leaves behind horrible sticky areas. Yeah. So here's the exciting next stage. It's probably my favourite stage of painting any tank. <laughs> what about it's you? The oil stage. Yeah, I, I love the oil stage. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really quite useful. Um, so yeah, the, the way I normally do it, um, I, I use just Winter and Newton. It's cheap and cheerful. Some people would say you'd need to use better ones, but I, I find these work okay. But, uh, um, yeah, so I just mix up a bit of the black and a bit of the burnt umber. So in, in equal measures, about 50-50, with some Odler spirit. You can use normal white spirit, but I can't stand the smell of it. No. But, uh, I prefer the Odler's one, which is almost no odor at all. Oh yeah, so that's great. great. I actually use, um, yeah, I use white spirit, but I make sure you use low odor stuff. I use the, yeah. just the cheapest stuff I can find in the supermarket, yeah. uh, not supermarket, a DIY store, yeah. it just works really well. But the artist stuff I did use in the past, which was yeah, no odor, or one which smelt slightly, smelt faintly of orange, was fantastic. All no, right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so after the oil is, is cured for a good four or five hours you can literally just splash it on leave it for well you can leave it for as long as you want you can even leave it to the next day and mm -hmm. um, then i use these eye brush makeup remover sponges to remove any excess oil 
and you will go through hundreds of these and only buy these 2,000 at a time and you can really just clean up all the the excess oil anything that's pulled it will all come off um, if you found that your oil wash wasn't exactly the right consistency you can take all of it off and start again the oil oil washes are really effective in in giving you any the, the shades it gives you really natural gradient on uh, on all the colors mm. and it picks up every single detail it's, I feel like it's the technique which sort of brings you to the next level all the time. It's, it, it is, just, but it's, it's so simple. I know. And for so long, I was so worried that I would mess it up. Or, But you can't mess it up. No. As, as long as you've got a nice sort of that, that varnish that I used, yeah. um, you can really go to town on it. You can even use an old bit of t-shirt or an old bit of cloth. Uh, as long as it doesn't scratch too much, yeah. otherwise you might take the paint off. Um, but, yeah, but I find these, these little sponges, they're fantastic for this work. I have to admit, I actually do have a pack of them down there behind <laughs> us. I've just started using them, but yeah. they are—they've been yeah, brilliant so far. Up until this point, I used to use uh, cotton wool buds. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I found the cotton wool buds there sometimes leave behind the little hairs. They that do. Are, yeah. yeah, that's one thing. And I didn't then like. you'll find them later on after you varnish the models. I go, oh, hang on, there's a bunch of hairs there. <laughs> that's no use. No. But yeah, these these have got no hairs on them at all. Um, you do go through quite a few of them though. They do soak up the oil really quick, mm. but it does look exceptional. Beautiful looking model as well. I really, I remember oh, when I we, love that Sentinel. It's yeah, so when it first cool. appeared on the scene, it's like, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, apart from the, all the tanks, how did you find the infantry? Do you find them quite easy to do? Did you use the oil buff technique on them as well? I have been using the oils on them, mm. um, but a little bit of a lighter wash. Mm. So, in, instead of because on these, the, the, the vehicles are splashed on quite thick and quite heavy. Yeah. Uh, on the infantry, I've done a, a little bit of a lighter wash, so it acts more like a sort of an aqueous earth shade. Yeah, so like a shade. Yeah, yeah, like a shade. So it's, it's less clean up. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll post some pictures on this as well after the after the video. Yeah, we'll attach a bunch of the pictures yeah. right at the end. But yeah, they, they were very fiddly to put together, <laughs> and they are chock full of detail. They are <laughs> they're absolutely stunning little models, but... Yeah, they were fiddly to paint, okay. but they are good fun. So uh, after this, uh, you, I don't know how many more tanks you're going to get for this. You got a uh, hell, was it hell hammer or what's it? Um, no, it's the Big storm one. hammer. That's the one. Storm hammer, yeah. Got all the battle cannons. Uh, I picked up one of the resin um, Malkadors as well. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, there's plenty more to to add on to this army. So after the all buff is complete, what do you normally do after that? Um, I, I normally do this all the wrong way around. So normally I would do my transfers after I do the the, the pledge, the, mm -hmm. the floor polish, um, because it's a nice smooth surface to put a decal on. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done that first before I do the oil wash. Mm -hmm. um, do you normally seal the transfer again before you do yes. it? Yeah. Yes, otherwise the oil can get behind the transfer. Yeah. I've, I've had a few of my, um, my my marines, my Alpha Legion marines, where I put the transfers on, the oil got behind the transfer. Doesn't make it, does <laughs> it, it? just makes it black. Yeah. <laughs> so I started using a, a gloss varnish to actually cover it over first. I know people keep saying that the, um, what's this, the yeah, pledge or uh, clear is pretty yeah, much the same sort of thing. But I always seem, I always seem to struggle with it sometimes. So mm -hmm. I, always, I like to do a clear over the top of it uh but yeah clear varnish over the top of it before or clear gloss varnish over the top of it before i start covering it over with the uh floor polish and then doing the oil brush stage oh, okay so that's what i do um for these though you've actually added a nice little touch because you love the alpha legion and hiding things in plain sight yes. so what have you done with your transfers for these uh well the, the some of the alpha legion transfers there there's a metallic -y green really light nice. Um, so they almost blend in with the greeny blue that I've used. Mm. Um, so I've I've been hiding them around some of these tanks, around the back of turrets, oh. so sneakily hidden away. <laughs> so you can, if you really look for them, you can see them. Mm. But at first sight, you can only see the solar auxilia details and decals. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted them to be to be there. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> Okay, so that about wraps it up. So thanks to Icon74 for his uh, brilliant painting guide and obviously beautiful models. 
So um, we're going to throw a list of the actual paints he used and the techniques he used at the end of this video so you can pause and write it down to your heart's content. Um, otherwise, keep an eye open for a little Hydra and I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe and hopefully you'll see another video of ours quite soon. Alright, take care. Bye.